Howdy neighbors, welcome today to Cedar Creek Homestead, where we're having another episode today of Porch Talk. We air these Porch Talks at 7 o'clock p.m. every Tuesday night, and we sure appreciate you joining us today. I hope you're having a blessed day and a wonderful day, and um, this evening's subject is one that I feel is very, very important, uh, and that is water, and we're going to talk about having a secure source for water. But before we get into that um, part of the program today, I want to talk to you just for a minute about subscribing to our channel. A lot of folks have asked how they could help us. You just simply hit that subscribe button and you will help our channel out. If you're not a don't have your own channel where you can subscribe it's very very easy to set up a channel through YouTube you pretty much just have to have an email address uh, but if you're not a subscriber can't subscribe whatever we still appreciate you watching also if you hit uh, after you subscribe there's a little bell icon pops up beside the subscribe button and if you click on that you'll be notified up in your notifications area whenever we upload videos uh, also, if you hit that thumbs up button, that means you like the video and you want to support us, hit that thumbs up button. Comment. All of those things help. You also are welcome to share our videos uh, on your social medias such as uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, whatever. But anyway, um, if you'd like to help us, we'd appreciate it. And we appreciate all of you who already have. And our subscriptions have been going up. And we are very thankful for all of you, the ones that's been with us all along and the new ones that's coming along every day. We want to say thank you and God bless to all of you. I want to say something here uh, today to start off with getting our subject about water. And the we take water for granted. You turn on your faucet, unless you're somebody living off-grid... The off-gridders, they, they understand what it is to have to conserve water. We are hooked into a rural water system, but we are blessed with water here. We have lakes here. Uh, we have a lake called Ten Killer Lake that has some of the cleanest water in the region. We have, uh, it's not as clean as it used to be, but at one time they hardly had to do anything to it. The water was so clean and pure. Now because of... Um, um, and you know growth and stuff like that that has caused this, the lake water to have to be treated more. We have an excellent a rural water system here. We have a new pumping station. All that is wonderful. I go in, turn on the faucet. We're very seldom are we without water. I know the guys that work at the water plant and they and their families drink the same water we do. So I, I know that they are concerned about the water supply as much as we are and would not do anything to harm us. But there are things sometimes that are outside of their control. And uh, uh, the water guys here, uh, I do a little bit of work for them from time to time uh, at their homes and also have done a little work at the water plant. And I get tickled because they they like to pull pranks and they had put one of their guys up to coming out here and told him to come and tell me that they were going to shut our water off for uh, like uh, probably five or six weeks it would be we wouldn't have any water. They were going to do a major repair. And if you knew the guy that they had asked to do it, He's such an honest and uh, good godly man, and he would not do it. And they all got tickled. He said, no way am I going to do that and go out there and tell him that. But they thought it'd be funny if they told, come out and told me they were going to shut our water off. But that would not be funny, folks, if your water was out for a, a prolonged time. We've had a few times that our water has been off here for just uh, maybe for a day or for a couple hours. And it's very inconvenient when you lose water. Um, very inconvenient. I mean, you know, you go to the refrigerator, we have a dispenser that filters water and you still go to it thinking you're going to get water out and nothing happens. Um, so uh, you, you get so used to it. You know, you, we, people waste a lot of water because we take it for granted. But there's an old saying says you don't miss the water until the well runs dry. And certainly that's the way it is today. <clears throat> but there's been things that have happened uh, around the world and around the United States from time to time that people are without water for quite some time and are not prepared 
for that. We get so used to it. But water, you can live without food for a while. You can live without electricity for a while. You can live without your phone for a while. But you cannot make it very long without water. Also, in a real world scenario, something really bad was to happen here in our land and we lost our water supplies. Let's say we had an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse happen, and that would shut down all of the water plants around, would shut down because they rely heavily on electronics, plus they have to have electricity to operate. operate. Ours has a really big generating system that would kick on in the event they lose electricity, but it is not EMP proof. So in a situation like that, we're going to have to be working more to just survive, which means you would need more water intake than you normally would. And uh, so having a, a source of water besides your main source, they always say you should do it in threes. Have your main source, have a backup to that source, and a backup to the backup. And uh, sometimes getting there takes a while. Our property here has three wells. It also has a spring. We are on a rural water system, but we, uh, besides the wells and the spring for water, we also have a creek that runs through here, the name of our homestead being Cedar Creek. Well, Cedar Creek runs through the middle of the property here. Most of the year it has water. It always has water in it, but most of the year it has running water. And I have, as a kid, just drank that water out of there. I don't know that I'd want to now because of the development and things that have went on. I, I don't know what all's in that water, but in, nonetheless, used to as a kid, we'd be out hunting. You would just take and get you a handful of water and drink it, and it's good and cold, never made us sick or anything, but you know, those times have changed. But there's things you can do to help in those situations where you're unsure, and we're gonna talk about some of the ways that we do here uh, to uh, have extra water sources and what we do besides the fact that we have the wells and stuff. But I'll talk about all that here in just a minute. But nonetheless, um, in case you're thinking, well, we'll never lose water. Well, one thing uh, you may think about this is this civil unrest, this rioting that has been going on. I know, I know it's uh, peaceful protest, but when you're burning down buildings and doing all these things that's going on and throwing rocks at the police and Molotov cocktails at the police and doing what's going on, that is not peaceful protesting. But anyway, we'll go on here and just say this. Let's just say with all the rioting, looting, looting that's going on, what if they attacked our water systems? Or what if there was some type of a, a biological or nuclear fallout? What if there are a lot of uh, scientists are concerned about a major volcanic activity that could happen? If that happened, they believe that the fallout, the ash and things that could get in the water could be very devastating. There is, uh, there's many, many things. And I mean, we could go on and on about all the possibilities of things happening. Uh, earthquakes. We have, uh, the past few years, had a lot of earthquakes in this part of the country. And um, we've had water lines bust here. Uh, at different times, they were having a lot of trouble with some of the water lines busting. And just all of a sudden, some of them are old and stuff. But I believe it's because of the seismic activity that's been going on. You have all that shaking going on underground. Uh, stuff is going to break. It might not break just as soon as you have the earthquake, but a week or two later, it will break. We even had a main section of the highway, which has nothing to do with water. But one day, a big section of our concrete highway over here on uh, 64 just um, uh, went up in the air. And it was up like this, and a car come along, and the lady hit that and become airborne and uh, hurt her car and she had to be hospitalized it, it was really a bad deal and they you know blamed it on whatever but there's some strange things happening and if you have the earth moving that much they come back and tore the concrete out and paved that little area and made it all smooth and now everybody's forgotten about it but if it can do that it can break your water line so there's times that we might would have just a short spell of not having water but being prepared for that to me is very wise even if it's just an hour or two if we lose water we have water that we've actually bought in jugs i meant to bring one with me today and didn't but gallon jugs of water we can go get in a long-term scenario we have other methods but 
Another thing that a lot of folks have been talking about is in the Bible. The Bible talks about the water becoming bitter and that a lot of people died because they drank this bitter water. Um, there's, it says this star or meteorite, whatever it is, falls out of heaven called wormwood and hurts the water. Uh, some have thought that might be a nuclear missile that lands somewhere and destroys the water. Whatever it is, it could just be a sure enough meteorite that comes from outer space that God has planned and timed for a certain day and a certain hour that will hit planet earth and cause the water to be bitter there's a lot of rough times uh, ahead um, and when it says bitter it just means poisonous that it would kill people who drank the water already in the world if you go to i have missionaries that have told me if you go to foreign countries you cannot drink the water we're used to pure clean water here that's been filtered and treated and everything. So when we go to a, a third world country, we're not ready for that. So if you go in the military, they oft, they, they, they uh, give them shots for uh, things that you would think were uh, done away with years ago. But it's because there's diseases and there's things even in the water. If they had to drink the water that's available, that the soldiers could get sick. The missionaries the same way. So uh, a lot of things we take for granted here concerning our water supply. So I want to talk to you for just a minute what we do here at our homestead to be prepared um, for uh, uh, water. And uh, I'm uh, uh, not going to turn the camera and show you. I, I would, but I'm afraid I would scare it off. There's a wild turkey just flew and landed right here. And it's just right there. And over, and it, my talking isn't bothering it, so all righty. Uh, that's kind of neat, something you don't see every day. But anyway, I'll get back to my subject here. Uh, we have, uh, I said said earlier, we have three different wells. We have a spring, a spring that runs year round here. It used to have an old spring house. One of my um, things in the wings of projects I want to get done is to rebuild that old spring house. And uh, I we would have to walk a little bit, but it's not all that far, but it would be inconvenient, but we'd have to walk down there. But when my dad was a boy, they stored things in that spring house to refrigerate their, their food and stuff. Um, so you could, and it also would be a great, we used it for a long time as a water source. We had to pump the water up here to the house, but in a, like an EMP situation, we could actually go down there and actually haul water, carry water, whatever up here out of that. We, the wells that we have, uh, we do not have any electric pumps anymore in any of these wells. Um, the one here at the house, it's just capped off there, but I can remove the cap and could put a submergible pump. I'm wanting to do that. Now, in the event of an EMP, that pump would no longer work. So we have purchased, um, if I did have a pump, it wouldn't work, but we have purchased uh, long well buckets. You may be familiar with those. My grandmother, when I was a kid, did not have running water. The running water is somebody had to run out and get it, and she had a earth hand dug well that they would drop uh, one of these buckets down in and get the water out of it she was always afraid as kids that we would fall into the well and so we, you know we're wanting to climb up on it and look down in it and everything and grandma was always like you know y'all stay back away from the mouth of this well and she had stories of people who had fell in wells and stuff so she was always afraid that would happen to us but we got us invested in a well bucket so that we could draw probably need to get another one of those well buckets just in case but we could at least have drinking water if it didn't get contaminated we'd at least have drinking water there is a fear that the underground water systems and there is scripture in the bible that talks about the underground water systems uh, it appears that it's referring to that becoming contaminated so you know back in the bible days water was like oil is today if you had water in, on your property, you had a place to get water. Uh, you dig a well, and we see where Jacob in the Bible, he dug wells, and they would fight over them. They'd take them over, and he'd have to dig another one and another one. And finally, he dug enough that they quit fighting over the water. Why they didn't dig their own wells, I don't know. But it seems like that today. Why don't people take some 
preparations you know if it's just storing a few gallons of water back where you could survive if you're in one of these areas uh, that have uh, are hurricane prone i would definitely think you would want to uh, take care of having water because there's a possibility that uh, uh, in a hurricane that the power would be lost to the water stations or they'd become flooded Last year we have, we're blessed with water around here, but if you can't get it to your home, what good does it do you? Last year we were blessed with, or not blessed, cursed, whatever you want to call it, all these major floods here. We had water like has never been seen in this area before, and the river had flooded and come over the dam and everything, and it just a bunch of stuff. You've seen the videos on that, but uh, the town across the river from us is called Weber Falls, and they lost water um, their pipe goes underneath the river from Lake Tenkiller. Well, as the river got so raging that it broke the water line, so those people didn't have water. They finally ran a, like, look like a big one inch uh, water hose type deal. It might have been two inch, whatever it was. They were going to run it up over the bridge. And the Department of Transportation, it's a U.S. highway, but they said that was against rules and regulations. They couldn't do that. And they're like, we need water. Um, Badly, because to restore our town, to clean up all the muck that was left, to do what needs to be done in the event of a fire or anything, we need water. So all the fire departments got prepared where they would rush over if there would have been a big fire with the tankers and stuff like that to try to help that community because they were definitely in a, um, a tough situation. But anyway... Um, uh, they said, no, you can't run that across there. Well, the vice president come to Tulsa to visit the uh, um, devastation up there. And while he was there, he called the mayors that were affected by this flood. And he called the little town of Weber Falls mayor. It's a little bitty small town, but he cared enough to call. And we thought that was very nice. And while he called on the phone, uh, the mayor said, well, we don't have water. He said, well, if we could get water, we're prepared to run a hose across the bridge here. But they're telling us it's against regulations to do that. So uh, they, he said, well, I'll see what I can do. And then about an hour later, they call and say, get that hose across the bridge. The Department of Transportation has approved it. So, uh, you know, uh, but you, it is so vital. If you don't have water, we see up in Flint, Michigan, where they their water become contaminated, and they they had a major deal there for a long time, not being able to have water, um, and um, it had to be hauled in and different things. But it really puts you in a bind when you don't have water. We had a hillside over here during our floods that wa caved in. It was out in the country in the middle of nowhere, but a big supply line went down at the bottom of that when that caved away it washed everything away and knocked that water line out and the people up there were all of last summer people in that area were uh, uh, without water it took a very long time and they would occasionally rig it somehow that they would have a little bit of water then it had to be shut back off and so they had to haul in water. But what if you couldn't haul in water? What if you couldn't go to the grocery store and buy water? Would you have some type of backup to get you at least for a little while? Um, one of the things I'm going to talk now about what we do to prepare here. I've already told you about the wells. We have the well buckets. I have thought about rigging, and I want to, uh, water, uh, actually put an electric pump or a solar pump. Now, in the event of an EMP, I realized that the solar pump would be knocked out too. And maybe if I had backup uh, solar uh, controllers and things where I could, uh, in an EMP type, uh, a Faraday cage, whatever, something that would protect them. But that takes a lot of money and it takes time to develop all those. But that is one idea. Um, one of the things is just rigging up. I want to rig up a real, I've got a pulley and everything, and I've got the lumber to do it. Go ahead and rig up on one of the wells a way to uh, a pulley and rope type system where we could lower a bucket down and get water. There are a lot of homes around here out in the country that still have their old well buckets hanging, the old uh, pulley, a uh, big well rope and stuff already rigged up, and they, they can go right back to drawing water out of their well. <coughs> Even though they have hooked onto a rural water system,
they have kept that just in case. And I think that's very wise to have some type of a backup in case you lose electric, you know, the water plants do, in case whatever happens. Um, another thing uh, here is just legwork, you know, walking down to the creek and getting water out, provided that the water isn't contaminated, something like that. So we have worked out ideas of things to do. One of the things is you can buy bottled water and gallons, jugs of water, and have them on standby. You can slide them under your bed. You can put them in your closet. There's all different things you could do with those like if you lived in town in a city uh, to me i would be more concerned if i lived in the city because you know that there's one thing that people um if you are thinking about leaving the city because we have lots of people leaving the cities uh new york uh california these states that have uh, went very liberal and they want to move here and all the ones I have met so far say they want to get away from the political, some from Colorado. Um, but they said the reason we moved here was because of the political beliefs. We did not believe that. But they still want to bring some of their stuff here. And oftentimes when they've left a big city, they uh, feel like that they could just call the police and have the police out here in a nanosecond. We rarely ever see a policeman in this area. If you do, you call them and you may wait a while. If there happens to be one close by, He'll be here even for fire protection. Uh, if your house catches on fire here, you'd better be prepared for things to take a while. So people come here and they think, well, everything's going to be like it is in the city. And the city's just going to wait on you hand and foot. All you got to do is call the mayor and complain or one of the town councilmen. Um, board members whatever and you'll get something done and uh, you know we are good here in our little small towns and the way things are set up in that area i would say but still you have to be more self-reliant and people will move here and build a house up here for instance on the hill up behind us there's a lot of people moving in and building little houses and they want to bring some of these notions that the government waits on you well here if you're going to homestead you're going to have to be independent and make your own way and be prepared because uh, here things can happen and and it's more like uh, our area here is more kind of like the andy griffith show people don't get in a panic i own a business here in uh, uh, heating and air business and people will call on the weekend that come down here they got weekend homes and they come down from the city and uh, they expect you just to uh, uh, jump out here and just be ready at a moment's notice to fix their stuff and uh, you know if you ever watch the one on Andy Griffith where the guy's car breaks down and he just can't believe that hick town that nobody's working on Sunday I don't work on Sunday I take that day off and I actually take Saturday and Sunday off and you know it, it, on Saturdays I will do stuff around here but it's uh, I don't want to work out for a living on Saturdays that's just me but I'm not the only one shares that belief it's not just Christian people around here a lot of folks are just flat out want their two days off and they they work very hard during the week i work very hard during the week a lot of hours and the weekends i want to rest so people come here thinking that it ought to be like it is in the city that you call 911 and they'll just run to your rescue now our 911 system has gotten very good but there was a time when I was on the fire department that you would call 911 and you would get an answering machine. <laughs> and it depends on the type and hours that they had, but they uh, at certain times of the day, you might call and um, they'd say, if you need ambulance, call this number. If you need fire, call this number. But there was actually nobody there on the 911. People from the city has a hard time believing that. And around here, one thing you'll find that most people here are armed uh, and they are uh, they police their own selves, their own stuff. And uh, we don't have a lot of thievery around here. There is some that goes on, but uh, if there's a good probability that if you get caught uh, stealing something from someone around here, they're going to shoot you. People don't go in and rob the banks and stores much around here because the owners and different people, uh, the customers and stuff, you don't know who's armed and who's not. So, But people are so reliant upon the... Uh, uh, 
that type of a system, a socialist type system that waits on you hand and foot, that when they move here, they're disappointed. So I tell people, get prepared and don't bring your ideas with us. We like the way things are here and you just need to become more self-reliant. But a tree will fall across the road. And right here where we live at, if a tree falls across the road, uh, me and the neighbors, we'll get together with our chainsaws and our tractors. We cut it up and drag it off. But there are people around here that will call 911 in a panic that they can't get out to go to town to get their fresh uh, cup of coffee or whatever. Or can't whatever it is they want to go do, they can't get to the casino. So they'll call and say, oh, I can't get out. What am I going to do? They're having a special grand prize at the casino. And the reason I say that is uh, when I was on the fire department, I would sometimes keep my radio during storms and things on scan and you hear these people calling in and I'm like what has happened to folks anymore but we're living in a time that we need to learn and if you're going to be a homesteader a prepper whatever you need to learn to be more self-sufficient so another thing we do when we go out on the road we have uh, bug out bags and in our bug out bags we have these things called life straws and I, I'm not um, getting paid or endorsed First off, just a little disclaimer for any of the stuff I'm talking about here today, if I mention any brands. But this thing here, you uh, uh, put the water in, you can drink it, it filters, it cleans it. We also have little tablets we carry in our bug out bags. And if you don't not familiar with a bug out bag, it's a bag that you would carry in your vehicle. Uh, I keep uh, a little bit of food, like uh, Vienna sausages, a couple cans of those. Um, you might say that's not the best food. That's your whatever. A couple of uh, energy bars. Uh, keep um, a couple of bottles of water. Um, matches waterproof matches uh things like that a little bit of rope a knife uh, uh maybe uh if um you know you keep a firearm whatever uh we usually have a firearm with us so we wouldn't need to put put that in our get out bag but um one thing uh in your bag you want to make sure you have water because if you had to walk a long ways home we keep a couple of bottles of water but that would quickly run out so you could take this life straw and it has instructions that come with it that tells you how to operate it you put your water in here and then you can drink it it filters it and cleans it there's a paper comes in the bag i opened this bag or others we are we i just opened it so i could show you uh, what's going on here but i would recommend uh, using one finding out how you go about using it and putting it back in the bag but to having a way to purify water if you were away from home and one of our thoughts has been what if an emp happened what if uh an earthquake happened and we could not get back home immediately maybe we had to walk home would we have the means to supply survive what would we do if we were out and had to spend the night somewhere um, you know um, and maybe all the utilities were down you still stayed at a motel or some kind of a facility that would keep you but you needed some of your own stuff having a bug out bag where you could have the stuff with you is very important having a mess kit uh, different things like that. So we keep those with us. One time when me and Josie was first married, we had a big snowstorm. We was living in Arkansas and a very big snowstorm come through. And that morning it was snowing and the weather guys uh, that we listened to all said that the snow would be melted off and gone by 10 o'clock in the morning and that it was pretty much over with, <clears throat> you know, go about your business, whatever. I walked out. We live pretty close to a highway, so I walked down to the highway, and the snow was just slush. So I was like, well, Josie, she went to work before me, so I told her head on to work. Well, she headed to work. In the meantime, this storm system stalled out, whatever happened, and it become a big snow. And she slid off the road and had to be, uh, she barely made it to her grandmother's house, and her boss come and got her because he lived close by and took her to work. But I got a call from her grandmother. We didn't have cell phones back then. So but she called the house before I left and she said, you'll have to go pick her up at work that she's not driving in this stuff. I said, no problem. I said, they said by 10 o'clock, it'll all be over. So I go to my work 
And the further south I got to get to my work, the better it was. And then my work stuff I had to do, I worked for Sears, uh, was back up in the northern part of the state. And as I was heading back up, there were cars off everywhere. The snow was getting deep. The roads were getting covered. Even the main roads so i uh went by her work and i said let's go i'm getting you home because this is getting bad out here and on our way home a truck had jackknifed or wrecked whatever and we had to stop at this store because the state police had the road blocked off and all the while this major snowstorm i mean it was a big and coming down and i was thinking how are we even gonna get home we didn't have any money uh, we would have ate there, but we didn't have any money. It just, uh, you know, uh, back then you didn't have the debit cards and stuff. We didn't have any cash. If we might have had two or three bucks, but wasn't enough to even buy anything to eat there. But we knew if we could get home, we had stuff to eat. We didn't have a bug out bag, nothing like that. So we waited an hour or two and finally they said they're opening back up the road and it was rough getting home and we finally got to our house and Josie's not all that tall anyway but when she got out of the vehicle the snow was way up on uh, up near her hip area and uh, it was a bad deal we went in and we had lost electricity we were on a well um, which we could melt snow for water uh, we had uh, so our central heat would not work, but we had a wood fireplace and we had wood put back. Now that's been, uh, uh, I believe, 27 years ago. <laughs> but we went through a time for a few days that there was even no, our road got shut down, the highway, and there was not even any road graders, nothing come out our way to even clear the road. We were stuck there. A very freak storm. We did not have water prep back, but we were able to take and go out and get snow and do things. We survived, uh, but if we hadn't lost electric, we would have had the uh, well water that we were on would have been fine. But but we did survive. We, we managed uh, then uh, to survive. I can't remember all the details that we did, but I know we ate good. We had a propane uh, cook stove, so we had propane to cook with, and we had a wood fireplace, so we... Uh, uh, burn a lot of wood to keep that old house warm, but we survived. But having a water source put back, but we might have needed our, our bug out bags at that particular time. Another thing is uh, water catchment on your home. And we have in the works here, I have caught water off of our uh, carport before just putting four buckets in each corner. We have one of those metal arched uh, carports and if you put a bucket in each corner if you get any rain at all it will fill all four buckets up so uh, there's your 20 uh, uh, gallons of water right there at five gallons a piece in those buckets uh, but i would want to filter it we're also wanting to work on a cistern system here where our guttering the water from our guttering would go down and have a hand pump that we could pump the water up in the event that we lost electricity if everything really went bad but Bes besides the fact that we think uh, uh, you might think it's a silly but the nostalgia part of it living in the country and if you had an old well pump like you used to see them around here people have done away with them but if you did bring your water up from your system having a way to filter it and right here is a Berkey uh, water filter system and a lot of people around this area use these all the time they if they have a well they put their water in one of these and have it filtered even if they are on a rural uh, city uh, government ran water system they still run it through a berkey filter system and use it we do not because our water is clean enough here that we're not worried about that but if i was to start using water catchment to drink uh, I would want to run it through a filter. So we can't have one of these. We're ordering extra filters too, by the way. I hope we have them ordered before I air this in case everybody jumps out and does it at the same time. But keep you some extra filters. Order some each year and have you a few... Um, put back you know we don't have the money just to run out and do everything we want to do and i'm sure uh, most of you are in the same scenario we are we have to budget ourselves we have to add a little bit each year so every year we add something and a couple of years ago we added this now we opened it up and viewed how to use it and what but we did not use it and we have taped it back up because we wanted to keep the seals and everything from drying out and uh, and keep it the filters have not been opened in here or nothing and and, uh, but in the event of a real-world scenario or a life-changing event uh, or whatever you want to call it, 
uh, we would have a way to filter water. If we had to go down here and ca carry water out of the creek or out of the spring house, I would want to run it through something to filter it if I was going to drink this water for just consumption. Now, if we were going to take... Um, and flush our toilets, you could just take water or whatever. And, you know, you can just pour the water in your bowl, in your toilet bowl. So some have thought, well, if we lose water, we wouldn't be able to use our toilets. Well, if you have water, like water catchment, whatever, if you put buckets like I was talking about around our carport, and we have a, a couple of carports, so I could actually do them as well and just carry in that bucket. You don't need five gallons to flush your toilet. You just need a couple of gallons uh, whatever your toilet's made for, but you just pull it in. Don't pull it up there in the tank, but just pour it in the bowl. When the water level gets up there, it will flush. And one thing you could do, you could limit the number of flushes that you had. So uh, I know that sounds nasty, but in a real world scenario, in something that was really bad, uh, you could survive, but you'd want to be sanitary. If you had a way that you could heat water, um, but if you have to, I have taken cold showers before. I've been on camps. I went on a camp one time, and uh, they had uh, showers, uh, but you did not stay in the shower long. They had wells, and they pumped the water up, but the water was not heated at all. And I'm going to tell you, whenever I got home after that training camp, one of the things I appreciated, uh, we it was all, we lived pretty primitive other than we did get to take a shower, but no hot water. So uh, when I got home, I enjoyed taking a good old shower. You don't, I told you earlier, you don't miss the water till the well runs dry. And if you've ever had to take a sure enough, just flat out cold shower, and if you know anything about well water, in the summertime, if you have a well, someone who has well water, it is the best drinking water because as you get it coming up out of the ground, it is ice cold and it tastes so good to drink out of a well. Um, but uh, my grandfather over here, we'd let the well run a little bit there, uh, the water come out, and man, you talk about ice cold. You didn't need to get ice or nothing when you got water because it was just super uh, duper cold. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, um, you, but he might want to figure out a way to be able to heat water, and there's many different ways of doing that. If you just have a, a black uh, colored tank setting outside that you could catch water into, that will absorb heat. And even in the wintertime, that will absorb heat, and you would get some uh, a warmth that way. Uh, there's even solar type systems that uh, the water runs through that uh, will heat the water up. And I have uh, messed with that a little bit and it works really, really good. It heats and even on a cloudy day, it can really heat your water. But there's many different ways. But as long as you got water, whether you can heat it or not, you could survive if you had a source for water and you were prepared for whatever. You know, folks, I'm hoping that we are sounding an alarm that is actually going to be a false alarm but with all the uncertainties that's going on this being a political year here here in the united states uh this is one of the weirdest wildest political years that we have ever heard and you, maybe you have heard this lately but uh, they're saying if the election was to be contested and it went past the cutoff date in january where the new president is sworn in, that Nancy Pelosi would be our president. Now, that ought to be enough to concern you, folks. <laughs> I mean, I think if uh, Biden getting it is bad enough, but I could live with that. But Nancy Pelosi getting it, folks. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, don't get me wrong, I'm a Trump supporter. If you've watched me any at all, you know that's who I'm supporting. But we could end up in a very civil unrest over this political deal, even if no matter which one gets it, if Biden got it or Trump got it and they declared one of them declared victory and the other one succeeded and said, hey, I'm, I'm, yeah, that one's won and all that, there's going to be civil discord. And with us being still with this pandemic and we don't know what it's bringing this fall and this winter, not knowing all that, it just makes common sense to be prepared. We could go into chaos like some of these countries like Venezuela went into. 
uh, I want to say America's greater than that, and we would never allow ourselves to get, do that. And this population that is destroying our country right now, that are wanting to destroy the democracy and peace that we have right now by rioting and uh, anarchy and stuff like that. That is a very small segment of the society. In fact, I feel like in those big cities, uh, they ought to uh, say, if you want out, get out. If you want to stay here and kill each other, burn your city down, let it be. And But you're going to have to rebuild it. And part of your sentencing is you can rebuild your own city. And some of those folks have never worked a day in their life. And when they have to get out there and actually start working, it's just my opinion. Uh, you don't see that in these other areas. And... Um, Around here, we're not having that. And I'm going to tell you why is we believe in law and justice. And when you go to burning people's facilities, uh, burning their houses, burning their businesses, burning their livelihood, uh, beating them, throwing things at them, this is very uncertain times that we're living in. I'm hoping and praying that all will work well and that one of the other, Biden or Trump will get elected and we'll survive through it. I did not think we would survive Obama being president. And I'm concerned about O'Biden uh, being president as well. But I just want to say, regardless of that, being prepared, um, uh, being prepared and of all the unrest. And if you think it's just all going to go away by who's elected president, I I'm, I'm think we're sadly misled. And I believe this, too, that we're in the last days based upon the Word of God. And if that's so, we are in for some rough times. But I'm preparing for the worst, but I'm hoping and praying for the best. And I hope that this is short-lived. All of the preparations we're made, making are not needed. I'm enjoying what we're doing. We've been doing this for a long time. I enjoy this way. I enjoy being independent. When the virus hit this year... We didn't run out and panic and say, oh, we don't have toilet paper. Oh, I ain't got food to eat. Oh, I don't have any beans to eat. We were prepared. Uh, can we say it did not concern us? Well, it did concern us, but we stayed home here on the homestead. I got a lot of projects done. We had a lot more time to uh, just enjoy life here, and I kind of actually enjoyed that a little bit. I know people that suffered with the viruses and things didn't enjoy it, but we actually enjoyed our little bit that we had here and uh, so just being prepared and being ready for whatever comes our way it doesn't hurt to be prepared you know around here we have uh, people put in tornado shelters and we're wanting to put us in Josie calls them freighty holes um, I've lived here a big part of my life and never yet been directly hit by a tornado but there's that probability that comes one day and being prepared for just such an event, what does it hurt? So being prepared for water, food, and raiment. And I always say, my I'm calling this my number one item we need to prep today is water. But really my number one item is, are you prepared to die? And we're all going to die one day. Are you prepared for that? That is always, always before anything else that we are prepared spiritually for what's coming. I know that death lies ahead for me. One day I'm going to die. I uh, am not saying I want to die. I'm not saying I'm uh, going to take chances. It's going to cause me to die. But I've got to live. The Bible tells us we have to occupy till he comes. So I'm going to occupy Till he comes. But I realize enough. I can see the handwriting on the wall. I actually read the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible. Then you you probably shouldn't be concerned at all. If you believe the government is the answer to all of your needs. That's fine. I believe God is. But I believe God's tired of messing around with folks. And he's going to let us to our own folly. And he's going to laugh. He's going to put us in derision. And he's going to laugh and mock when folks are in trouble because of their disobedience to God's Word. Anyway, that's enough there. I could preach a sermon on that whole thing. But I do appreciate you watching today. Once again, God bless you. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock for another episode of Porch Talk. We're gone.